Visiting New Zealand is Sir Angus Gillen, an Abedonian who's in charge of the Empire Division of the British Council. With him is his secretary, Mr. A.C. Towsey, a former Wellingtonian. Sir Angus will tell us the object of the British Council. Before I say what the British Council is, I should like to say a word about why it is. We UK British are really rather a shy people, and we've often been inclined to let other nations get ahead of us in the art of putting their goods in the shop window. It was to combat this that the Council was brought into being, and under the terms of its Royal Charter, it exists for the purpose of promoting a wider knowledge of the United Kingdom in other countries and developing closer cultural relations between the United Kingdom and other countries. In other words, the Council's job is to interpret British life and thought, our achievements, our history, our political institutions, our social and educational services, our arts, sciences, industries, even our sports. In short, the British way of life. Now, I know that in New Zealand there is as great an appreciation of the British way of life as in anywhere in the world, perhaps better. But geographically, we're a long way away, and I'm sure that we still have a good deal to learn from each other and about each other. <laughs> This is a picture from the final weeks in Italy when the New Zealand front line was hard up against the west bank of the Seigneau River and the Germans on the other bank were still very active. Artillery officers under cover from snipers are observing our gunfire directed at Jerry Hill buildings. About 300 yards away, the thick walls proved too tough for light artillery and something heavier must be called for. A message is radioed to divisional headquarters. At headquarters, the message is received, written, and taken over to the air operations officer. will be no good later saying sorry wrong number and the air operations officer checks the map reference before passing on the request for bombing the place his request goes to is the base of number three squadron royal australian air force the only hundred percent australian outfit remaining in the italian theater of war australia receives new zealand's request for support To Australian pilots taking over the patrol of the front are allotted the targets facing the Maoris sector. Bombs are rolled out and all the preparations made to put a dozen Mustangs into the air. hundred pound general purpose. go, 12 of them over the transport lines and up towards the front. Always on this front, there were 12 fighter bombers in the air, in contact with the ground by radio, and ready to give the army on the ground instant support. 
This air support system, the cab rank, was brought into operation by Air Marshal Sir Arthur Conningham. Today, some of the targets are known already. Some of these bomb taxis are engaged. It's nearly dinner time now. Over they go, over the New Zealand artillery line. And over the front line and towards where Jerry too will be thinking about some lunch. nuts have been cracked and the cab rank forms up again after a little action involving two of the nations who fought and won on the tortuous battlefields of Italy. <laughs> 